right, thanks. Thanks for having me, everybody. Um, uh, let me see. So uh, I've been around for a long time. I've been at, uh, I was looking back at my career, I've been at eight different companies. Most of those are startups. Uh, I've learned a lot along the way. So um, when Matthew asked me to talk, I just thought, um, you know, I know this is like a younger group of people. I should probably talk about, like, what would I tell myself if I was 25? Like, what things have I learned? So um, I was kind of drawn to the idea of communication. Um, it's sort of what I do at Slack now. So um, uh, it's definitely something I think uh, I didn't think about when I was younger. Uh, and looking back, it's pretty damn important. Um, so first off, I'm going to show a bunch of tweets. Um, and they're short and pithy, um, but they're not like, the famous guy tweets that are like supposed to be fortune cookies or motivational posters. I hate those. Um, so these are really good tweets I'll be showing you. Um, this one I've seen uh, hundreds of times. I don't think this guy invented it. I heard it 20 years ago um, that essentially hard skills are easy and soft skills are hard. Um, that, but it didn't really click for me till a few years ago. And now it just seems painfully obvious to me. Um, so code, you know, I mean, I've programmed in four different languages. You know, it's just formatting syntax. You can teach someone the basics, and then you can just learn the syntax you need. And, like, um, we talk a lot about code, but, you know, code's a teachable skill. Um, interacting with humans is this, like, lifelong challenge um, that we don't talk about very much. Um, so I started to think, what could I wedge into 10 minutes um, of the entire, hum the all humanity um, interactions? So I'm um, just focusing on communication. Uh, and some tips that'll like hopefully help you out at your job um, and interacting in your little teams. Um, so uh, these are things I wish I knew when I was younger. Um, that uh, interacting with managers is something you have to do all the time. It's not easy. It, uh, and for me, managing people was super hard, and I was terrible at it, and I don't do it anymore. And I'm super happy about that. Um, Writing is, like, for me, pushing a boulder uphill. I was not born with the gift of, uh, of, of being able to express myself easily and on the fly. So um, that's something I've worked on my whole life. And I work as a writer now, so uh, it's a lot easier to me, but it's taken my whole life. Uh, and really, communication is central to everything. Um, so in talking to managers, I just want to talk about one-on-ones. Um, this is pretty standard in the industry. I mean, do, does every, anyone here have a regular one-on-one -on -one with their manager? Yeah, like half of you do. Um, so you have to do, if you've never done one, it's like, um, I think it's a good uh, thing that a lot of tech companies feel they, they probably should do because the CEO saw it in an airplane magazine that, you know, on management or something. But, you know, you should talk to your manager once a week uh, or some regular rate and, you know, give your concerns, have your manager explain stuff to you. Um, but a lot of people I know just dread them. Um, oh, and I ran my own company for like 10 years and like never did them, and it was terrible because we only had like crisis one-on-ones every six months. And I would like much rather have been like every few weeks we could have just talked about anything, and I would have nothing would have built to a crisis. Um, so, uh, like this is a classic lame one. Like I've had these before with people, especially when I'm new to a manager. You know, like what's up? Nothing. How's it going? Fine. Alrighty, like um, this is a standard one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, I've seen a lot, and it sucks. Um, and this is like my ideal one-on-one, -on -one, which is like uh, you know I show up, I have a million questions. Uh, sometimes you know I have managers I've connected with over all sorts of stuff, and like it, they're just therapy sessions that are awesome. Um, this is my current manager at Slack. This is my fourth manager at Slack. Um, we've grown 10 times since I got there. It's, we're around 1,000 people. I think I was about employee 100. Um, every six months, when I joined, I was a second writer. I think there's 40 of us now across all sorts of disciplines. Um, every six months, we like split everything into threes, and people just do one more specific thing. We call it, uh, what is it, letting go of your Legos. Uh, like whatever you do, like 25% of what you're doing today, you're, someone else is going to do in six months and you're going to be moving on to new stuff. So that's constantly happening. I'm constantly getting new managers every six months to a year. And I have to, you know, gel with that person, um, you know, interact with them, figure them out, uh, figure out, you know, what they can bring to me, how we're going to interact. Um, 
And so I started taking notes to myself. I would say this would be like a good, if your one-on-ones are boring, um, bring, if, if your one-on-ones are boring and your manager doesn't really care or isn't bringing a lot to it, you should. So like every week, during the week, like uh, I just write down questions to myself. Hey, that thing on Tuesday, I was a little confused on. Hey, I heard that announcement you know, last Friday. What's that going to mean for me? Um, and so I always have these agendas that I bring to it. Um, sometimes I you know, send it to her before, especially if we have to, if I'm going to ask her to look something up or something. Um, this is like last week's one-on-one, -on -one, so all my questions are in the top. And like, we're doing ours remotely because she's in San Francisco and I'm up here. So it's easier to type while someone's, you know, we're doing a Zoom thing. Um, I also find one-on-ones are like, I don't know, more, what is that thing? Like when you're on the phone, you can talk deeper because they're not in front of you. I don't know. Like I actually love like a video conference one-on-one -on -one because there's like that distance and you can, I don't know, be harsher or be more honest. I don't know. So like I take tons of notes about whatever answers are flying down and this goes on for pages. Um, so um, I would say if you're having the standard one-on-ones that are uh, not fruitful, not something you look forward to, like work on it. Um, you know, take notes, bring questions. Um, and I would say like, uh, I don't know, good interactions I always think of as people being vulnerable with each other, but that's really, t uh, you know, thin ice. You have to walk on and figure out what your comfort level is, what theirs is. Like, Technically, that person pro could probably fire you um, someday. So, how vulnerable or honest you want to be is like something you gotta like figure out slowly. Um, I would, you know, when you have like a new manager, or you want to make them more, like share more. Like I would just try something, you know, little maybe, and see what the reaction is. Um, for any topic, there's an oh no comic, and this is a perfect one. You don't want to overdo it with your manager because <laughs> that could happen. Oh, and I was just researching this the other night. I found there was a one-on-one -on -one, um, one -on -one, um, a pack of cards, and they're like really amazing questions, like just really in-depth. Like if you had nothing to talk about, this is like, where do you see the company going in the next decade? Like they're really great. Um, I think this is probably overkill, but um, yeah. So if you don't like your one-on-ones, like, I think it's worth doing a little work to, to improve them. So writing. Um, like I said before, uh, I think some people are just naturally gifted. They're good storytellers. They're able to express themselves. And I think everyone else, like we have to just practice this for the rest of our lives. And uh, uh, like I nearly failed most high school English classes. I did, I worked my butt off and I was like a science major, but I worked my butt off in college to do the language classes I had to do in literature classes and like got B's and C's and um, it was tough as hell. And then eventually, you know, it was like 10 years of writing hundreds of daily emails. I just sort of got better at expressing myself and, uh, you know, I've written some tech books and been a tech editor and been a blogger and worked on the New York Times a little bit. Um, and so like, it's just a lifelong thing you gotta do kinda. Um, I think it's like getting way more important, um, not just for people who have a job writing, but like remote work, um, I think is, you know, taken off and um, like I am a remote worker, like my existence in the company is just the text I write. Um, there's no hallway conversations for me. Um, I fly down once every couple of months to San Francisco for a few days for meetings and stuff, but generally like whatever I write is like who I am in the company. Um, and I'm basically text on a screen. And I think like these tools, uh, you know, Slack and Microsoft Teams and Flowdoc, like whatever it is, the more people use these, and I mean the more you're reduced to text on the screen. Um, uh, if you ever get to go to the Slack offices, it's like dead silent. There could be 100 people in a room and hardly anyone's talking and all you hear is like keyboard tapping. Uh, it was really creepy when I interviewed there like uh, uh, three years ago. It was just dead, dead, dead silent. It was. There's so many people, and it was like not a sound. Um, and it's not, again, it's not just for writing. I think software documentation, like being a good writer, like basically you're a friend to your entire dev team. You keep everyone on the same page. You guys get to solve problems together. You know, the better you document your code, the better you can share that work with others and figure out problems and debug them. 
I think um, postmortems are great, something I never did before till I was at like a real sort of um, formal company that's formalized this stuff, which is when we're done with every project, we have meetings, we have write-ups, like what went wrong, what went right, what are we never gonna do again? What are the things that were surprisingly great that we could do again? Um, and these were like more opportunities for people to express themselves. Um, I think the better writer you are, the better you'll do at work, especially in like text heavy environments like chat and stuff. Um, it's like something really core to everything we do. Um, once you start getting good at it, it's kind of this weird superpower. Um, like, man, I can write a mean email to like my daughter's school if I have to, to that perfectly explains the problem, like it's fun. Um, people respond to your bug reports and your feature requests when you can like adequately describe them. Um, you know, I see people uh, commending others for like good questions in department-wide meetings because um, you know they were really good at concocting the perfect question. I, I've never, I couldn't think of a single situation in my life where like being a better writer was was a bad thing or got in the way. Um, and I'm starting to see it in like the engineering teams at Slack that like the best communicators, the best writers are like kind of like pulling ahead of everybody else. That like they just seem natural leaders. Um, uh, like we tap some of our developers to write public blog posts about how we build stuff and like some of the um, uh, uh, code frameworks we use and all the tips on like what we've learned. Um, but I also see it in the designers, like the best designers that can write well end up being the people who interact with clients and agencies that like, you know, everyone has like that one killer person on their team for that. And I'm starting to see more mentions of stuff that about like, Writing's a good UX skill, and um, I love this one. The older I get, the more I have to say, and the better I'm able to express myself. I feel like I'm hitting that stride right now, and um, it's pretty nice. Um, so just some general communication stuff before we go. Um, I thought this was awesome. Uh, in Silicon Valley, I used to think being too human was a weakness, too empathetic, too emotional, too vulnerable, too feminine. Now I hear human, now I wear human as a badge of honor. Future lies in humanists building a human layer on top of technology. I think this is like as software eats the world and replaces so many things. Like um, being the human voice, being the uh, empathetic one on your team is like vital. Um, it's something we definitely look for at, at Slack. Um, there's, I mean, anytime, sometimes people go down a rabbit hole of a new feature and there's always someone to say like, how does this help anyone? Or how does this work in this situation? What does this do in a low bandwidth environment? Um, and it kind of keeps a check on everybody and I think super vital. Um, like every bad work situation I think back on was like a breakdown of communication was always at the core of it. Um, it's usually like people at the top down not sharing information until it's too late. That was a very popular one. Um, it's something that I think the adoption of tools, they're more transparent as we move away from email that like, you know, um, if everything your team is doing is in some sort of text channel uh, and everyone knows what's going on, I think that's a good thing. Um, you don't have people like wielding information as power over others. Oops. Is that it? Nope. Yeah. Uh, this is from one of my coworkers and it stung a little bit because um, I love it. Yeah, like uh, when you're arguing with someone, like what the hell, everyone's an idiot. Uh, uh, this happened at work. Um, I found a bug in Slack. I was really uh, fired up about reporting it. We have these like open reporting channels. I report it. I got in an argument with a developer who was like, eh, "It's like feature, not a bug." I'm like, "This is terrible. This is terrible for people for like these three ways." And he was like, "I don't see why I'd fix it. Like, um, you know, it works as people expect." Um, and I was really mad at him. Um, I hardly ever get in arguments with people, but like. I don't know, like a week later I realized like I was terrible at describing what actually, like why we should refactor the way uh, mentions work in this one in one view and um, the bug is getting fixed now. But um, I definitely take greater care when I make bug reports now to make sure. Um, the entire tech world's gonna be gobsmacked when I finally realize the solution is to take more time and think about people more. Um, there's a lot of old famous people saying things like this. Um, so uh, I would think about this now as you're a young person that um, this stuff is way more important than you think it is. Um, learning the latest Node.js 
stuff is maybe not the most important thing, but um, uh, I just wrote this as like a mantra I came up with working um, on my own stuff. I'm mostly doing user education stuff that, you know, I try to be cur courteous and observant and have empathy, but, you know, express that to my team, express that to uh, readers when I'm writing. Um, I think that second part, this highlight is the hard part. Um, and I don't think we talk about it very much. Um, while I was putting this together, uh, I stumbled on this thing from just a week or two ago, which was a uh, Google ran a long time, long term study for a couple years on like all their hiring practices. They sort of followed people they had hired for years to see who were the successful ones. You know, what did we do in hiring that bred that kind of success? Um, what were the qualities the successful people had? You know, years after they were hired. And this is the greatest like. Um, uh, pull quote from it that like among the eight most important qualities of their top employees um, STEM expertise came in last came in eighth and the top seven were all like soft skills um, and they're all like about half of these are communication based uh, related but you know this is like being a human um, you know having empathy towards people and your users and um, being able to connect with people and being able to communicate um, you know and then eighth is like how to you know pretty good coder. Um, I thought that was awesome. So uh, closing up, uh, again, I think uh, interacting with your managers isn't the easiest thing in the world, but I think it's something you can actively help uh, make a little better. Um, don't forget, managing people sucks. It's hard. It's a skill. Um, I would say writing, like uh, I'm sitting here saying, right, 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 right. Uh, I don't think I'm like a weird friend saying you got to work your calf muscles, it'll change your life or something. Like writing really helps everybody. <laughs> um, and it, it just pays off uh, in all sorts of ways and there's ways to apply it to whatever you do. Um, and like the older I get, the more I realize good communication is sort of central to success basically for any sort of team. And that's it. Thanks. Thanks for coming out.